My name is Onoko. Welcome back to another video, another reaction video. And actually, what I was going to say was I watched Scarlet Nexus's, um, I think, like the little gameplay trailer. And I wanted to know more, but I didn't want to make a video way too long. But I found this, which is a Scarlet Nexus review or final preview by none other than IGN. And um, I want to hear what they have to say and talk about it. And while, since I didn't react to the Scarlet Nexus, I'll talk about it too. I've played a lot of character action games and action RPGs in my years of gaming, which was why when I went into my hands-on session with Scarlet Nexus, I figured I pretty much knew what to expect. But you know, Scarlet Nexus surprised me with a style of combat that combined elements of the character action genre with RPG elements I in ways it. that I haven't I love really the way seen it looks. done before. At least not this effectively. I'm a sucker for flashy lights, explosions, epic moves, epic little mm, like kind of like those those moments where it zooms in. It's like yeah, like kind of cool shit. So that's exactly what I expect. Add on top of that, a unique brain punk aesthetic and the core mechanic of being able to throw cars at your enemies. And Scarlet Nexus is standing out. You got telekinesis out in all the right ways. All right. Guess we've got no choice. Hanabi, let's go. Scarlet Nexus's world is one that runs largely due to powers of the brain, hence the brain punk label. People communicate telepathically. There are augmented reality pop-ups and advertisements. Oh man, I'm glad I I I'm glad I'm doing it to you guys. I'm doing it to you guys. <laughs> this can very well easily be this world. I'm telling you, that's where these game developers get these. There's already people around. Actually, if you have even a best friend or someone that you closely love, you can you can start learning how to do things like this. All over the city. That was the holographic universe. Many of its inhabitants are gifted with special mental abilities. But it's funny that the world runs on mental abilities when the universe in real life is all based on the mind. The two playable protagonists, Yuito and Kasane, are equipped with psychokinesis, which gives them the ability to move objects with their minds. Yep. But through the usage of what's known as the SAF, this book talks about psychokinesis. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Struggle arm system. They're also able to temporarily borrow the powers of those close to them. Cool. And you know what I'm gonna say? Um. Oh, oh man okay i'm not gonna keep doing the comparisons to real life but they definitely knew with this game what they were they knew this stuff is talked about certain people in real life have mental powers this forms above the some uh the astral body actually talks about this some people are actually born with stronger gifts but technically technically everyone has the main framework of scarlet nexus is combat both Yuito and Kasane are able to fight with traditional attacks using their preferred weapon of choice. For Yuito, that's a sword, and for Kasane, it's a handful of knives that she sends out and calls- I know he didn't just say a sword. Come on, it's a katana, it's back bro. called kinetically, but in addition to that, they're also able to seamlessly toss anything that's not bolted down at their target for big damage. The catch is that using your psychokinesis takes a great deal of mental power, and the only way to restore that power quickly is by getting back in the thick of it and landing regular attacks. So you're encouraged to mix it. Actually, uh, what I wanted to just throw this in here, if you don't know, but the military used this. A really strong mental ability that's used right now is remote viewing. I know how to do it, and you can train yourself to do it. And there's there's actually a lot, like lucid dreaming and stuff like that. These are all mental abilities. I don't want to say, honestly, no. Okay, I'll say it. They can all be used. You know, nothing is really good or bad because those are just constructs as humans everything is what you make it so i'm not saying if you want to use these things for good or bad but i know people who can remote view and literally you know i don't want to say I, there's just people who have done things with remote viewing in regular and psychokinetic attacks regularly and thankfully there's a really great flow to the combat where you're able to toss an object and then immediately press the attack button to dash in towards your target i'm, I'm some glad that this game meter, is like and this and then when you try to throw an object again if i don't play this it would be a crime 
This mobility It'd be a crime I'd create for myself. Unlike many other action games, you have to fully commit to either attack or defense, as you cannot cancel your attack animation to roll away. So mixing in your psychokinetic attacks with your regular attacks is actually an important way to be on the defensive, to be on the defensive. while also still being on the attack. Yeah. The final wrinkle in the combat system is the addition okay. of your party members, each of whom have their own special mental power. And can be called upon to temporarily give you their to, ability. Ah, uh, that's childhood friend Hanabi, for instance, has pyrokinesis and is able to imbue each of your attacks with flames, which you can then use to ignite enemies that have oil on them for massive damage. Kasane's platoon mate Shiden, meanwhile, can imbue your weapon with electricity, allowing you to shock enemies and deal huge damage to those covered in water. While we only have footage of these two party members, rest assured that there are plenty of other characters and powers to toy around with. Some were enemy specific, allowing you to more easily deal with a certain challenging enemy, while others were more generally useful, like generally the ability useful. to turn invisible and either perform sneak attacks or quickly escape from a dangerous situation. The most promising aspect of this whole system oh, is the fact that your party members' abilities can be strengthened by a persona-esque bond system that has you deepening your relationships with each individual character, which in turn adds new properties to their abilities. What's even more impressive about the Oh my gosh, it'd be, it'd be criminal if I don't get this. ...is that there are two playable characters, and their playthroughs are almost entirely different. And that's probably the aspect of Scarlet Nexus that excites me the most. I spent the majority of my playtime playing as Yuito, but I also had time to run through the first hour or so as Kasane, and was shocked at how different things felt. This is absolutely not a case where there's a male and female option of the same character. Kasane and Yuito are entirely different characters with distinct personalities, different motivations, different relationships, and different combat abilities. Yuito's combat- That is how you do a male and female choice. Now, I'm not saying exactly, because you can do, you can, like, there are good games where they just do the male and female, but that is fucking cool. You get a different perspective of literally playing the other and I feel like that's good for the, for the, if the thought process of thinking that not everything can be the same as being male and just male, because there's differences between masculine and feminine energy. So definitely living in the perspective of being a girl and living as the perspective of being a guy is very two different, you know, energies, but we all have masculine and feminine energy. It's a thing about balance, but as guys, we won't truly fully understand how it is to live as a girl. We chose to be go down this path of being a guy. There's probably guys that have past lives of being girls. You can get into a lot of stuff with this. I'm not going to get too esoteric for a game. No, I am because that's my channel. But the point is, is just like, you know what I'm trying to say. But definitely in, in one lifetime, when you're a certain you can't really get the full experience of what it's truly like to live like a girl. But yeah, then like definitely this, uh, there are some people that do like, you know, maybe like the guys that are like born as girls, but something like we're all born as a girl, but you know what I'm saying? I don't have to explain it, but you know what I'm saying? So that's like good. They did it from the perspective of like, these are literally two different characters. It's not like same traits. Um, different name like okay like far cry 6 for example donnie's getting showed the girl right but is the guy gonna be donnie also but it's just a guy instead like that instead of being completely different like we show they end up showing a far cry Charlie 6 for the guy and the guy's got completely different um uh motivations like because i'm pretty sure she's trying to escape the country before she decides she wants to lead the revolution what if the guy wants to lead the revolution right off the bat like you don't know that style for example is focused on short range sword attacks that excel at dealing a lot of damage to a single enemy kasane's on the okay. other hand is more of a mid-range style that is a bit slower but has the advantage of adding a bit more aoe to her attacks their skill trees develop their abilities very differently as well. Yuito gets the ability to quickly recover when he gets knocked down very early, allowing him to quickly like get back into close range. While Kasane's earliest power-ups enhance- I'm not even realizing how weird the enemies look. Cause it's been a while since I watched the gameplay trailer and they look really strange. Combo. She gets an early double jump and air dash that she can use to extend her air combos in ways that Yuito can't until much deeper into his skill tree. Mm. And what I was going to say was, I'm assuming he's about to get into the types of things we're fighting. 
because I would do that in a final preview. Fixes in their campaigns are even more profound. While their paths do cross occasionally, leading to some similarly structured missions that both characters share, the two are on completely different platoons of the OSF, the other suppression force, which means you'll be consistently interacting with a different set of party members depending on whether you're playing as Yuito or Kasane. As impressive as that's incentive to literally play both people. This all was, there were still a few disappointing bits. Even though Yuito and Kasane go on different missions with different characters, they generally traverse the same locations, which does make a lot of the missions feel very samey. Even though uh, the context and dialogue yeah. of those missions are very different. It's an issue that's made worse by the fact that the levels themselves are very bland to look at. I saw a lot of empty streets, parking lots, and construction yards with very little personality. Of course, these are all just impressions after just about four hours into a game that uh -huh. seems like it has quite a lot of meat on its bones. Nevertheless, I left my preview very eager to dive right back into Scarlet Nexus and learn more about its characters, world, and see how deeply I can sink my teeth into its fast and frantic telekinetic combat. For more Scarlet Nexus, make sure to check out the latest trailers along with our previous preview of the game. And for everything else, keep it here. Should I look at the first preview? Because it almost seems like in this one he didn't explain like the, the beasts and stuff they're fighting in this world, but I could have easily just completely missed it. Yuito and hear. Kasane oh, and Kasane are able to fight with traditional attacks using their... This is like on, on the attacks. I'm assuming in the first of preview course. they talked about the enemies. I'm assuming they're just fighting some These like... These are all just impressions after... I'm assuming, okay, so I'm going to assume, but then I'll go watch it on my own because I'm not just going to make an entire video watching another preview. Or why wouldn't I do that? I'm not going to do that. I'll just watch it on my own to understand what the creatures are in this world. But they really look like some distorted, weird shit. I kind of want to figure it out. But, all right, well, that'll do it for this one. I'll see you in the comments. I read all the comments, so... Let me know what is up, what you want me to react to. Follow me on the socials below. I will see you.